Hey, yo, what's up? You know what it is. It's the one and the only Professor L live in the LAB, live on Team GRF TV. And I'd like to welcome you guys back to another installment of Triple the God Speaks On. And you guys know it's time to get in the lab. So I need y'all to get ready for class. So I need them lab coats nice and spiffy. I need to make sure you nice and sterile because we about to handle us some dirty work. And do not touch the L experience, man. Those things are expensive. I keep telling y'all, man, we are trying to sit up here and show you how these L's get delivered and show you how these L's get collected and trying to do it in a way that we can show you how it's done and know the experiments are very important to that end. So don't touch them, all right? Regardless, in your seats, eyes at the board, because, yo, coming right to build, episode number 12, Theory of Comparison. And I don't know what to say because if I could sum up this episode in one word and review it in one word, the answer would be, huh? Because it's not a huh like that. It's more of like, yo, I kind of saw this coming, but I really didn't think y'all would pull the trigger on that. But let's explore this episode because we ain't going to do a lot of jumping and back and forth in this analysis and review of it because I am still fresh out this episode like a couple of minutes. I just finished watching it, just turned the mic on, and I am trying to sit up here and understand what it was I just watched because he hears the truth. I've watched enough Kamen Rider to understand what it is I've just watched. I am trying to understand this within the context of Kamen Rider build because... I think about it like this. Given the elements that we dealing with here, you got that you got that boy Night Raoul, leader of the Grey Squad, and you got Japanese big worm over here sitting up her calling shots. So you already knew that it's going down. It's like you saw that part at the end of the episode. It's like there's Night Rogue. He's kinda acting strange. He's looking weird, and then you look over and it's Gentoku like sitting up her like, yo, shoot this fool, and I'm like they not doing this. Not right now. No, 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 no. I'm like, yo, you you can't really do this. Not that guy. Not that boy Noriyaki. All that fool been doing is putting in work. All he been doing this whole series putting in work. Hey, y'all for to send him up here to take a L? Here's the thing. Also, given in these elements that we got a lot of stuff at play. You got that blood boy, blood stalk set up here. Can mask your face as anything. Now... In this episode, Bloodstalk and, and Night Rogue, they just can't get along, so they have a fight, you know what I'm saying? And then, in this fight, a lot of things happen there. It's like, yo, that boy Ryuga sits up here, cross that dragon, sit up here, yeah, put your work in, homie, do that. Sento gets all his full bottles back and gets two parts of the, two parts of the, you know, the size that go in the Pandora's box, that's great, I'm like, yo, Bloodstalk and that boy Night Rogue went hamster on each other, that's also wonderful, I'm like, in other news, it's like, yo, Japanese Lois Lang, we forgive you, hey, won't you go see OG of the Grey Squad and tell him his son doing some old evil nasty stuff, I don't believe you, then the dude run in, McDonald's, Donald McDonald. I don't believe you, woman. Get this woman out of here. This girl, this girl sat up her turnt and jumped out a window. Not before karate kicking some fools, but you know, she jumped out a window. I, I was gonna say something, but I don't want to put that type of pressure on me, and nor that type of pressure as sour as a character to ever deliver that because the last female character. That I put that type of pressure on that she could have been that gangster. It never technically came to pass in a way that fans of that show could appreciate. And I'm not saying that show, <laughs> I'm gonna run away with it. but I don't want to put that type of pressure on her. I don't want to do that. I don't. Um, I like. I like I like Pirate Train Guy, you know what I'm saying? Pirate Train. That's not the actual name of the form because allow me to be stupid. Allow me to be stupid. It's Kaiser Kuresha. I'm like, I know that. I'm like, we've had a Sentai about both of these things. You know, Kai Kusentai, go Kai, which is probably one of the best Sentais of all time. And, you know, Resha Sentai, so cute, Jeff. 
have I talked to y'all about your future, about how I really feel? Here's what I really feel. The twist of that show, that should have just been the show. That, that's it. The twist the show brings, that should have been the show. I'm glad we were able to review Rush and Sentai Tokyuja within this Kamen Rider Build episode about pirates and trains, I guess. Look, let me sit up here. Now that I've done, now that I've done a little clowning, let, let, me, let me get to the base of like where I am like mentally with this right now. This was coming no matter what. There was going to be no way that even when Sawa betrayed them that you're going to really rock the status quo of Team Bill. She ended up becoming useful in the end, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? How much useful is she really going to be? The answer is a whole lot. So, Sawa going to be putting in work, but now she put it in for the good guys. I really didn't think they were going to waste a good character like that and just let her just go float off into the wind. Nariaki, on the other hand, if you honestly believe that fool dead, you a fool. Just real talk. I'm not trying to say that you are a fool, but if you sitting up here in your head and you think that boy Noriaki really dead, bruh, no. I guarantee you, we episode 12, I say we get the next, we, we get a couple of, maybe we get a couple of twists here and there. No later than before episode 30, this fool come back in a rider form. Money on the bed. Anybody on the internet, take me. I got money on the table. If you don't believe, if you believe that boy Noriaki is dead, get in the comments. Take me on this bed. I got money, real money. We ain't talking internet cookies. I got bread. You tell me what it is, I will ante up. Because I, I cannot believe you would kill a character that good and not have a way to bring him back. I'm like, I, can I say that at this point? Given who it is who usually come through and actually sits down and listen and kick it and do something while I'm on the mic. You know what? I can't say this. Original Lord God, right? From Common Rider X, that original Lord God. If you don't know who that is, ask some of the folks who've been kicking it with your boy who kicked it with me all through X8. When Original Lord God came back, Rider do whatever the hell it want now. So I really have a hard time legitimately believing like legitimately believing that that Noriaki is really dead and they really finna sit up her and they finna really like wrap him up unless but I'm like you can't even believe those pictures on Twitter like here's some flowers for you thank you for coming can't believe them no more either cause the show do whatever it want and this is a show where people be getting their face melted off and changed I'm like you I'm like Noriaki transformed into that boy Night Rogue. Anything is possible in this show. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I sat up here thinking this whole time that even though we learned that information about the Night Rogue stuff and the Bloodstock stuff a couple episodes ago, I, I really honestly thought, even with that information, that that was something that, like, that bonds with you as a writer form, I assume, but I guess not, I guess, you know what I'm saying, like, if anybody want to become, ba 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 back, mismatch, I guess anybody can sit up here, and sit up here and vape, and then you become a, and you become a common writer enemy, I guess, I just use the word vape and common writer enemy in the same sentence, this ain't gonna go well, okay, regardless of that, I'm sitting up here at this point, because there is one thing that I've importantly left out that I want to discuss. The end of the episode. And no, we're not talking about Saw. We're talking about I'm sorry, 2004. No. Mm -mm. Nah, not talking about that. Hey, yo. What's up, dog? It's your boy Nabi Shima, homie. What's up, man? Oh, what it is that you need, sir? I am coming right about what you need. I. Right. you want to know who murked that fool? It was... And then you see this look on Sento's face, and I'm just like, I see what? You you know who set up her and set that boy up with you got banjo for that murder? And I'm just sitting up here like, for real? Well, again, given at this point that the show has taken this turn, it's like you had Japanese big worms sit up here and say, like, yo, sacrifice, sacrifice foul dog. 
Like, they ain't even in play no more. Japanese Big Worm, he that gangster, he calling shots, dog. Japanese Big Worm is the best character in the show now. See, remember when the best character in the show was, was Gintoku, a.k.a. that boy Night Rogue? Remember that? Do you remember when he was the best? No. Japanese Big Worm is my is, is my hero. When I grow up, I want to be like Japanese Big Worm. Because all this food do, he sit up here like, yo, I'm throwing fish in the koi pond. Hey, oh, yo, by the way, go kill a whole bunch of people. And I'm just like, this dude is a goon. This this dude is a this dude is one of the best goons in common right I've seen in a while. This dude is a straight goon, and I've had to say the word goon repeatedly because I need you to understand that boy Japanese big worm is a straight goon. He just sat up here and turned around and told that boy Gintoku, "Hey yo, we destroyed Faust. Put your little homie in a suit, dog, and murk this fool." And I'm just like word but i'm like in early in the episode it was like you had japanese big worm you had japanese big worm tell little nephew noriaki yo put in some work for the hood fam i'm like how we go from putting some work for the hood fam to yo dress up as night rogue and get shot and i'm like japanese big worm dude that dude is a beast i'm just like it's like I, I sit up here and I talk about that boy Japanese Big Worm and it's like I, I really I think that he has gone as gangster as Japanese Big Worm can go. And then Japanese Big Worm does something else and I just be like Wow. Like this dude is a goon. I'm like, you have to be Say you have to z give zero nothings to sit up here and be, yo, this thing you kind of have built, destroy it, dog. It's like, this nothing to me, dog. We ain't sitting up here, we ain't having no people vape this stuff so they can become smashers, man. We'll do it somewhere else, dog. It's like, yo, you done lost Pandora's box to that boy blood stuff? Yeah, well, what you gonna do? But, hey, you owe me a favor, homie. I'm like, yo. I ain't gonna be here at 10.03 and 10.36 or 10.57. If you ain't got my money or my full bottles, I'm killing you and him. And I'm just like, why, Japanese big worm? Why do you continue to be this gangster? I'm just, I'm just like, for real. I could sit up here and we could have a whole conversation about the episode that Japanese Big Worm and Namba has been involved in. How Japanese Big Worm is this super gangster. And I'm just like, I don't remember the last time in Kamen Rider, it didn't been a dude like Japanese Big Worm just calling major shots this early. You see, okay, because think about it like this, because, because, yeah, because we talked about the episode, the episode is crazy, and we, and we got it and everything, it's like, you know, episode was great, but I want to take some time, and I really want to dive into this Japanese Big Worm thing, I really do, because, when I think about it, I don't really remember the last time in either Kamen Rider or Sentai that this early on, you had a dude this powerful behind the scenes and you seen this fool putting in work, dog. Well, you know what? Actually, in a different way, we did. That being original Lord God. Original Lord God will smile in your face and stab you in the back. Japanese Big Worm is on another level. Japanese Big Worm sits up here and does mad dirt in the shadow, dog, and you don't even see this fool. He just sitting up here, la di da di da We sitting up here building Ferris wheels. We ain't killing nobody. Oh, by the way, we got 30 tanks behind this Ferris wheel, and we about to murder your whole city because I'm Japanese Big Worm. And it's just like, I can't do this, but I want to. I want to be deeply involved in whatever Japanese Big Worm got. Because whenever Japanese Big Worm is on the scene, Japanese Big Worm puts in work. And it's like, the, the and like I say, the reason why we are going on this tangent about this character is because of this episode and everything that this man has orchestrated. It's like, again, let's, let's run it. Let's run the game one more time. Just in case you you watched the episode and you wasn't sure how gangster this man is. We first see this fool at a koi pond. And that boy Noriaki walk up. Japanese big worm, sir. Yo, man, I, I just need another package, man. 
No, nah, nephew, no. Nah. I need you to put in some different work. He don't even he don't even tell us the viewers what the work is. But Nariaki went and did whatever, and I'm assuming that work was showing Sento where the, the, it was a third floor in that basement so that he could go find Pandora's box form. Because I'm like, even Sento mentioned it at the very end of the episode. And, I, and, I, and I'm sitting up here, and I'm quoting the overtime sub translation of this, but you get my point, though. We have been dancing to their tune the whole time. And I have been sitting up here saying that from the J-U-M-P. And they have. If, if, it ain't been that, if it ain't been that boy Gentoku being that boy Night Raul, leader of the Grey Squad, sitting up here getting Sento to do his dirty work. It's been, it's been Bloodstock letting these fools move and sitting up here. Got everybody on the chessboard looking stupid and dumb. I'm like, for real. If it wasn't that boy Gentoku, it was that boy Bloodstock. And if it wasn't neither one of them, it was Japanese Big Worm calling shots to that boy Night Rogue with Bloodstock doing whatever the hell he want. This is your villain hierarchy of the show. Japanese Big Worm run everybody except Bloodstock. And when we finally, finally figure out who this fool is, this is really going to sit up here and A, it is going to change the dichotomy of what the villain hierarchy is. And, and you're sitting up here like, yo, Trip, for real, you really think that revealing who a character really is is going to change the villain hierarchy? Yes, it will. And here is why. Because remember the feeling. Because I remember a couple of episodes ago when we figured out that Gintoku was Night Rogue. And knowing that information changed everything that A, what the villain hierarchy was, and B, made you sit up here and look at everything this fool did until the moment you find out who the hell he was. And as someone who watches the show, who enjoys it, but also sits up here and knows that he's going to turn on a microphone and analyze what it is he saw. I had that moment to sit up here and look at everything Gintoku Himuro ever did. Like, yo, this fool is the gangster behind everything. And I'm just sitting up here like, yo, you heard, I don't know, go back to that episode. Go back to the episode when I found out Gentoku Hamaro was that boy Night Rogue, leader of the Great Squad, and how I've been praising him ever since. But that changed. Because then you understood that his gangster wasn't really his gangster. His gangster was Japanese Japanese Big Worms gangster just sitting up here and it's like it's a transfer of gangster, if you feel what I'm feeling right. It's like Japanese Big Worm tell you what to do. You do whatever it takes to make sure Japanese Big Worm don't cut your balls off and hand them to you. Because Japanese Big Worm will do that. I'm like, yo, you see what he did to Sawa. He sat up here like, he sat up here, Japanese Big Worm. What's up, little lady? I failed you. It's cool and just hung the phone up on And she knew. And she knew at that point. What time it was, the girl knew, like, what time it was. Ran to them, ran to them boys, help me, help me, please, Japanese big worm, don't kill me. And we are what we are right now. And we are what we are right now. So, yes, my point, I had to go, I had to go, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I had to do the yo mama so fat, she hopscotch across the earth joke, but we got to the point. When we find out who Bloodstock really is, and, you know, we, I have my thoughts, we've talked about it. I know that you guys watch this show and you got your theories too. Once we find out who he is... We're going to question everything. And then it's going to change the villain hierarchy because now that we know, you sit up here and you look at everything that character do different. Everything Gentoku does in this show, because not only because I love this show like you guys do, 
and I know I analyze it, and that, and it's like, and I've said this before, and I say it again. One of the main reasons why I get on the mic and do this is because it helps me to gather my thoughts, understand what it is that this show is doing. And letting me understand, like, yo, this is this, and this is that, but what if this is this, and what if this is that, and to have those questions. And a show that is about the theory of science and all the stuff that Build is about as a basic character and an extension, Kiryu Sento, is I'm glad that this is a show that is allowing me to ask questions, but... That didn't stop me from asking questions, even when I was clowning, when I was reviewing XA, even when I sit up here and I do my work when it come, when it come to Q Ranger. It don't stop the questions, but this is a show that's going to be more of a mystery because of the type of writer and the type of world we're dealing with. At the end of the day, the game has completely changed. That last scene is our next through plot. You got you you got that boy Sento like we need to know who that boy Bloodstock is, who that boy Night Rogue is, what's really good. We got to prove the link between the Gray Squad and that boy Japanese Big Worm and his crew. This is what we on. With that call by Nagashima that's when we find out, because that's what the show going to open at. Jaws going to hit the floor. If it's somebody we know, Jaws going to hit the floor. If not, then you've introduced another wrinkle in the plot and a character that they have to get over to you. But again, this show has not failed to get a character over to you to make you understand their importance, why they matter, and why they're a part of this story. So I don't have a feeling that the show is not going to do that in any way. So I have no no qualms about that. But either way, we in for a trip for real. I'm like, this was a nice way to because I honestly think that this is a this is the end of an arc. I really I don't know like how many arcs we've been through, but Faustin name is done. They sat up here and and Big Worm legitimately made that boy Gentoku technically walk himself out there to get shot. Sent his homeboy to do his dirty work and then killed him because Japanese Big Worm said to kill him. We as done with this as we gonna be. As done with it as we going to be, as the show is going to be done with it until the show brings it back up for plot relevance. And that's not going to be long from now. Because, again, the end of the episode and, 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 the, nice set, and the nice play that the show brought before it. This whole magical, this whole magical performance of, hey, we going to destroy Faust. Hooray! You know, military common riders, blah, blah, blah. Shoot at him. Bang, 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 Oh, yeah, by the way, man, I'm your homie. Now I got to shoot you in the shoulder. Now fall off this thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, name a movie where people fall off things after getting shot in the shoulder. Blop. And that was it. We got a through line. That's not something this show has had in quite a while. Is that we knew as fans of the show what was probably going to happen. But the show, like, this is what we doing. That we as characters are announcing to you, the people who watch, this is what we on. Get ready because we going full nonstop. It's like, you really got to wonder, like, where the show is going. It can't be nothing but good because all it's been is good. But, yo, that is an episode of Common Rider Build. Episode 12, if you want to keep in count. Theory of Conspiracy, name of the episode, just in case you forgot what that was, because we've been talking for some time about this. Yo, before we get up out of here today, um, that's next week, y'all. I got plans. I done bought some tech. We doing some work a little bit at a time. I'm like, when I'm ready to discuss what things are going to be, because it's a nice long conversation, and because of things people keep saying, there's something that needs to be explained 
and there's only a way that I can explain it and when I'm ready to do it and it's going to be pretty soon I need you guys to listen up and listen well because yo we about to take this to another level with that time so just be staying tuned for that um Q Ranger whenever Q Ranger actually come up I had that popping off and I got some things popping off through the ring so please stay tuned as you know as news breaks you know what I'm saying the GRF newsroom will have everything you need with that. All the old good stuff that we usually provide you every week. Before we get up out of here, for real, for real, for real. Like, and I said that for like, what, the second time? Thank you guys for tuning in. Whether you whether you hate it or whether you love it. Because I appreciate that you love it. But I don't care if you don't like it. Because, see, that gives appreciation to the people who show love. And I know who you guys are because all y'all do is show love. So I appreciate y'all showing love and I love y'all back. And all that y'all that hate, they got something to say. All I can do is say that's constructive criticism. Constructive criticism, understand it for what it is, and then toss it in the trash because I'm understanding what it is. And I will use it and move on. There you go. How about y'all do me a favor? And how about I say this? Class dismissed. Lab coats. Cubby holes. Wash those hands. Be sure to be sterile. Go to recess. Chill. Go get lunch. Go do that. Do not touch any of the experiments. Those are expensive. Those are important. And one of these days, I'm going to share my thoughts with the world, but don't touch nothing. Get up out of here. Go. Lunch. Recess. We'll be back later, and we'll be back in the LAB. You have my word on that. For real, go on and get up out of here. You know what it is? The one and only Professor L, live in the LAB, live on TGRF TV. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining me for another installment of Triple the God Speaks On. And always, please remember, Triple the God Explains It All, the LAB, live on TGRF TV, and come and ride a bill. Put those in some full bottles. Stick that in the bill driver, spin it up, and you know what you get? Best match. Ha 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 